Don't move to Utah unless you can handle these 10 negatives. Utah is a fantastic place. We have some amazing national parks. We have low unemployment. We are probably the outdoor capital of the world, but there are some negatives. When you search all over the internet, all you find is positives. But on this video, I've got 10 potential negatives for you. Stay tuned to number 10. That's my favorite. For some people, it's a negative. For me, it's a positive. And we're getting after it right now. And I'm Mike Gallagher. If you want to learn everything about living in Utah, eating, sleeping, drinking, recreation, you've come to the right channel. You may consider tapping that subscribe button down below. Let's become a friend. Also, if you hit that bell notification, you'll be notified every time I release a new video. And that's every week. And honestly, we're receiving so many phone calls and emails from all over the world, and we absolutely love it. So if you are considering buying or selling real estate in Utah, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. We got your back when moving to Utah. Coming at number one, we have the weather. Seems like no matter where you're at in the United States, someone talks about the weather. I'm going to divide the state up into two halves, northern Utah and southern Utah. In northern Utah, we have four seasons. During the springtime, it does rain. Not as much rain as the northwestern states. During the summer months, you can expect daytime temperatures in the 90s. Some days will hit 100 degrees. During the fall, it's absolutely beautiful. During the winter months, you will receive snowfall. The amount will, is determined on your elevation. So if you're down on the valley floor, you can get two, three, four inches of snowfall. If you're at a higher elevation, that will increase to six, seven, eight, nine inches of snowfall. Southern Utah also have four seasons. During the spring months, you do receive some rainfall, not as much as northern Utah. During the summer months, you can expect temperatures in the 110 to 115 range. During the fall season, those temperatures drop to the 90s. During the winter months, it drops to the 50s, but southern Utah rarely receives any snow. I actually love the four seasons. It's not too hot for me and it's also not too cold. Coming at number two on the list, we have humidity. State of Utah is a low humidity area. Can lead to some dry skin and dry eyes. I seem to suffer from both of those issues. Some of the cures, I use moisturizer all the time. During the summer months, if I'm wearing some contacts, my eyes will dry out and I'll have to use some eye drops. Also, if you use a humidifier in your home, that'll help out. You can also place bowls of water around your house. There are some advantages though to low humidity. We seem to have less mold. We also have less bugs. People with asthma seem to do a lot better in a low humidity state. And high humidity causes your clothes to stick to you and that feeling I'm not a big fan of. Another positive for low humidity, I own no hair dryer. I literally can get out of the shower and my hair, the little bit that I got, can actually instantly dry and I really love it for the outdoor activities. If I have plenty of water, I can go all day on my mountain bike, golfing, hiking, just give me lots of water. Coming to number three on the list, we have air quality. There are days in Utah where the air quality standards are below normal. Most of these days are due to an inversion. So what's an inversion? Well, in the state of Utah, we live in a bowl. We have mountains on the east and mountains on the west. So the dirty, polluted air gets trapped down below when a warm air layer collects on top of the dirty air. It really acts like a lid on a bowl. The polluted air has nowhere to go. We have to wait till we get a storm or some heavy winds come through the valley and blow it all out. There is good news though. Just a couple months ago, there was a report released. The EPA said that Utah's air quality is starting to meet some of the federal standards. This winter, I've noticed we have less red air days. Could be due to COVID-19, more people working from home, less cars on the road. It could be due to the fact that Utah has been working on the air quality issue for about the last 20 to 30 years. And some of those uh, programs are probably cleaning the air. Also, if you're concerned about air quality, the local news stations report it every day. We rate it from a red down to a green and a lot of options in between. Coming at number four on the list, we have poor service. In Utah, customer service can be below some of your normal standards. 
But hold on a minute, it's not the fault of the businesses, it's mostly due to low unemployment. Probably going back about 20 years now, we have had historically low unemployment. Even during the recent COVID-19, we ranked as one of the states with the lowest unemployment rates in the nation. So businesses are having a hard time trying to fill some of the service-oriented jobs. Everywhere I go, I see now hiring signs, now hiring, now hiring. You walk into some of these establishments and you can see that people are just rushed off their feet trying to do the very best they can, but it's just understaffed. I make a lot of trips to the local home improvement stores all the time. And I notice that I'm always helping people load sheetrock, wood into their vehicles. There just isn't the kind of help that is needed in some of these stores. And at the same time, no, I look out front and they're saying, we're now hiring, now hiring. So I always keep that in mind. I've actually been to some fast food establishments where the drive through has been closed on some days because they do not have the staff to run the entire operation. So I always say out there, you know, be kind, keep in the back of your mind that, you know, we do have low unemployment in the state and there might not be the staff on hand when you go into some of these establishments. Coming to number five on the list, we'll call this one Vacationers Take Over. State of Utah receives millions and millions of visitors per year to the state of Utah. Whether it's to the ski resorts, to the national parks, tourism is very, very popular. It's great for the economy, brings in a lot of dollars to the state coffers. But on the negative side, there are long lines. Go to a national park, sometimes you'll find lines, especially this year during COVID-19. A lot of states were shut down. People got in their cars and motorhomes and all came to Utah to visit. Long lines. Ski resorts during the wintertime also. Sometimes it's tough just getting to a ski resort. The lines can be long. The lift lines can be long. Restaurants. Try to get a seat at a restaurant in Park City during the winter months. It's very, very tough. Also at the national parks. A lot of mom and pop businesses that are located down there. They are just jam-packed. It's tough to grab a bite to eat in some of those places. So for residents of Utah, it can get a little overwhelming. We try to visit some of those same locations, and we're in the same lines, having a tough time getting something to eat. It does take a little bit of a drain. Coming at number six on the list, we have wildlife. If you are going in the back country, you're hiking, biking, mountain biking, fishing, hunting, riding your UTV, your, your dirt bike, you have to be careful. We do have some animals in Utah that could endanger your life. I'm going to go through a list of some of the animals that you may see in our back country and some recommendations on what you can do if you do encounter any of these animals. First up, we have bears. They recommend that you stay calm, you wave your arms, and you make a lot of noise, but do not run. You can also purchase bear spray. In the state of Utah, we do see mountain lions. So if you encounter a mountain lion, they want you to stop. Don't run. If you run, the mountain lion may feel that you are prey. They want you to talk in a low, calm voice and to back away slowly. There is a video on YouTube of a man in Utah who encountered a mountain lion uh, within the last year and he handled the situation absolutely perfectly. We do see some coyotes, so if you encounter a coyote, yell, look bigger than what you are, throw rocks, and throw sticks. You may see some rattlesnakes. If you do come across a rattlesnake, back away slowly and to leave it alone. Now, my personal experience, I have come across a couple rattlesnakes I'm usually on my mountain bike and I just continue on with my journey. I do not stop to have a conversation. But if you're out there in the back country, be careful and be alert. Coming at number seven on the list, it is easy to get lost. We seem to have a mixture of street names and a grid system. We used to only have a grid system. You would see addresses like 100 West, 1000 South. It was easy to find someone's location by the grid system. But over the years, we have included a lot of street names now. A lot of new subdivisions all have street names. So we've got a mixture of a grid system and also street names, and sometimes a combination of both. The grid system was usually pretty easy to figure out. 
you know, the further that you head west, the numbers would increase if you were going west. If you were heading north, as you travel north, the numbers would increase. When you were traveling south, the numbers would increase. And when you were going east, same way there, the numbers would increase. So if someone's address was like a thousand west by a thousand south, and you were on a hundred west by a hundred south, if you continue heading south all the way down to a thousand, you'd be on the correct street, and then you just have to head west to a thousand west. You didn't need a GPS, you didn't need a map, you could find it. So it's always my recommendation that you need a GPS system not only for the local roads, but if you plan on hiking and biking the trails, some of the trails are long and windy, might be a little difficult to get back. Be handy to have a GPS on hand to get you back to your original destination. But if you are gonna live in Utah, make sure you have a GPS on your phone, in your car, because between the street names and the grid system can get a little bit confusing. Coming in at number eight on the list, we have ice. If you're living in northern Utah, be careful of icy conditions, whether it's on the road or around your house. On the roads, if we just had a snowfall and it has melted and turned to water and the overnight temperatures decide to drop below freezing, the next morning it'll be icy out. So be careful in your car, around the house, be especially careful. Stairs are a particular issue. It only takes a small amount of ice to lose your footing while you are going down a stair fall to the ground, break a leg, break a hip, not a fun way to spend the winters. The sidewalks also, be careful with icy conditions on your sidewalks. If it ices overnight and we get a snowfall in the morning, be careful of that underlayment. You might be able to walk fine on the snow, but as soon as your foot breaks through to the ice layer, boom, down you could go. Be very, very careful. I do have a couple recommendations for you some good boots with some grip. You can buy boots with a winter grip on the bottom that gives you lots and lots of traction. Very, very good investment. Investment number two, ice melt. Keep lots of ice melt on hand. Best time to buy it would be in the fall or the early winter time when there is lots of supply. As we start to get some ice forming or some snowfall, the stores seem to run very low on ice melt. It can be a hard commodity to find. You can never use too much ice melt. Coming at number nine on the list, we have traffic. If you're in the Salt Lake City market, Salt Lake County market, uh, Utah County, Davis County, you will experience some traffic from time to time, especially during the morning commute and the evening commute. We have a major interstate that runs through the whole state. That would be the I-15 corridor. During the commute, it can be slow and go, especially if there's an accident or we receive some snow or ice, get some slide offs, reduces down to one or two lanes. It can get backed up for quite a while. There's one area a lot of people don't talk about, and that is the east to west commute through Salt Lake County. In my opinion, it is probably worse than the I-15 traffic. Trying to get from one side of town to the other side of town, there's no major freeways that take you from side to side. There is I-215 that loops around, can get you to some of the areas, but for the majority, you're taking some of the city streets with traffic lights and heavy, heavy traffic, especially in the mornings and in the afternoons. It can take a considerable amount of time going from one side of the valley to the other side of the valley. There is a couple solutions for you. We do have a train system that works very well. We have the Front Runner train that runs from Ogden all the way down to Provo, Utah with stops in between. It's a great way to go. In Salt Lake County, we have a track system, a light rail system that has many stops, especially in the downtown area. We also have a great bus system to help with some of those traffic commute days. Coming at number 10, we have pets. Utah is very pet friendly. We have a high rate of pet ownership in the state of Utah. And whenever you look at a list, you'll see Utah towards the top for pet ownership. So if you're afraid of dogs or don't like dogs in general, it would be a negative in the state of Utah. You will find a lot of families love their pets here and usually have multiple pets. Matter of fact, our city parks have been designed with pets in mind. 
It is not uncommon, some of our parks, to allow dogs without a leash. Some parks require a leash on their dogs, but some do not. All the time when I'm on the hiking and biking trails, I will always see people with their dogs. As a matter of fact, when I take my UTV out for a ride, it's not uncommon to look over to someone and you will see their dog riding in the cab with them. Fishing and hunting has always been very, very popular with your pets. Also, if you're looking for employment, if you're a veterinarian or a technician, most clinics are hiring. The clinics here are very, very busy. It is not hard to find a job in that career field. So in conclusion, that's my top 10 negatives for the state of Utah. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. I do have many more videos on my channel for your enjoyment. Until the next video, take care and stay safe.